I found clips of some very famous celebrities speaking Italian. And in this video, I'm gonna be reacting to every single one. There are some stars in here, but also a few duds. So let's get into it. Nessuno, è secondo l'individuo. Uh, sono persone che pensano che c'è una differenza, ma secondo me c'è ne è poco. So tanti, conosco tanti attori che, inglesi che lavorano in modo che si può dire sarebbe americano. Il mio training era quasi tutto americano o russo, ma niente inglese. Era Strasburg, Jutta Hagen, Stella Adler, Stanislavski, Grotowski. Um, sono inglesi, ma non, io non, sono, non ho avuto un'istruzione un inglese. Uh, so this is a really good start from Colin Firth. I'm really impressed. So Colin, apparently, he learned uh, Italian to impress his in-laws when he married his Italian wife. And you can see that he's, he's learned it. He, he can, he can, he's, he's comfortable when he's speaking. He's got a good vocabulary. Uh, I, really, I really like this. Now, apparently, he also said, uh, he was asked whether he would ever play um, an Italian role. And he said that he'd only consider doing that if, if it was an Englishman who was speaking Italian in the film. So, yeah, he, he, he's very um, bashful about his own Italian. And he, and he says himself that his accent is the area that requires most work. And I think you can, you can spot that in places here with his Italian. He's, so Colin Firth's very English, like despite being an actor, he's like, he's extremely English. And he has quite a closed mouth when he speaks. And you can, you can hear with, uh, in, in, with his Italian in some places, he could really do with opening his mouth a little bit more uh, those those rounder vowels and you could you could hear at the end of words as well sometimes and this is something that a lot of english native english speakers do vowels often get forgotten and kind of just like dismissed in the pronunciation of the word but in uh, languages like italian also in spanish you've really got to make sure that every vowel in the word is properly pronounced and you can hear that that bit i'll show you a little example of that here so tanti, conosco tanti attori che, inglesi che lavorano in modo che si può dire sarebbe americano. Io yeah, he says conosco tanto attori inglesi. He, the, often the vowels right at the end, they just kind of get lost in the mix. So he could, I think he could improve a bit by just pronouncing those a little bit more clearly wherever they come in the word. But good job from Colin Firth. Who's up next? One little boy in particular did. Melania speaks Italian, nice. So this was unexpected. So my guess here is that really, she doesn't really speak much Italian, but she knows uh, some phrases, some words and some phrases. And she's, and she, you know, credit to her for actually on camera in a, in a big public situation, actually speaking, uh, speaking Italian to these kids here. I think that's fantastic. The big giveaway, of course, is when she walks into the room and says, uh, come stai? Because of course in Italian, come stai is to one person. That's that's the second person singular form that you use when you're talking to one person. What she should have said is come state. State being to uh, you plural because she's entering the room and speaking to lots of people. So that's kind of the giveaway there that she probably doesn't uh, have a grasp of Italian grammar. Although it's, you know, to be fair, it is an easy mistake to make for beginners. But I am all for giving people full credit when they actually learn a bit of the language and use it. Because imagine for the kids just how cool that was to actually see the first lady walk in there and actually speak to them in their own language. That's the kind of thing that we should be doing. Now, who have we got next? Contano la mattinata a Fontana di Trem. Ho dovuto fare un viaggio molto lungo ieri. E allora questa mattina mi sono svegliata e mi hanno portato alla Fontana di Trevi e, e pensavo che era un, so un sogno, perché c'era tutta questa gente lì. E io vedevo lo spirito di Fellini e lo spirito di Mastroianni e dopo pensavo sono qui con, con Pedro, ma eh, eh, ci sono tante cose eh, simili eh, nel mondo di, di Pedro e nel mondo di Fellini. So nice. So Penelope Cruz, so she is obviously Spanish, and so Spanish is her mother tongue. Now, Spanish and Italian are very close together, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can speak the language well. I remember when I did my uh, my Italian project, I learned Italian. A lot of people said to me, "Well, Ollie, you already speak Spanish, so therefore Italian is easy." 
not the case. It might give you a sort of easier way in, but actually one of the challenges when you speak a language that's very similar to another is to actually remove traces of that language that you already know. And so for, for Penelope Cruz here, it would be very easy for her to kind of speak sort of uh, pseudo-Italian, inserting a lot of her Spanish. And you see this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, trading of, uh, of languages a lot between it Italians, Portuguese, and Spanish. People kind of, kind of, they kind of half know, they know a few words and phrases in, in each other's language, and then they kind of carry on as if they speak it. But what's impressive about this is that Penelope Cruz clearly does speak Italian. Her grammar is excellent. And she speaks with, um, with with clarity and with confidence as well. So that's that's really impressive for her. Apparently, she learned Italian because there was an Italian movie that she really, really wanted a part in. So she went off and learned Italian, especially for that. So good job for her. I think if there's one thing that you can that, that does come through from this, it is that her the I think her Italian lacks a bit of expression. You know how how in Italian it's a lot more of a sort of singing language, a lot more like like Brazilian Portuguese, for example, than Spanish, especially Iberian Spanish, where she's from, which is kind of very, you know, quite closed and quite rhythmic in the in the expression of the words. You can hear um, in some words that she's saying here that they could really do with being sort of lengthened. Um, some of those some of those vowels are quite short, injecting a little bit more intonation into there, perhaps. But it's a minor criticism because you know. Really, she speaks fantastic Italian, and again, doing it in an interview on camera spontaneously—that's the kind of test for people. Like, if you, if you, get, if you, you know, you say you speak a language, but when you get when you get sat down and asked questions in the language, can you hold your own? Uh, and she can. Now, let's see who's up next. We must ask, because we are also on video. Siamo anche in video. Uh, who is your friend? Can we present him? Presentiamo l'amico mascotte che ha Vigo. Mi chiamo Sigi. Come ti chiami? Sono psicoanalista, mi chiamo Sigi. Sono il, il, io e il mio amico Topo Gigio abbiamo fatto la psicologia molti anni insieme. E di questo... Ah, uh, I think we need another example, don't we? Just a second. Green Book non ti dice Cosa devi pensare? Cosa devi ascoltare o vedere? Secondo me questo è un film, questo è un, un, un invito a fare un viaggio, a ridere, a, a piangere se vuoi e forse a riflettere eh, sui limiti delle prime impressioni. Non è, non, 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 non è una, una, una lezione forzata, è una, una bella storia condivisa del passato. I really like this from Vigo. So Vigo speaks a bunch of languages. In, uh, in a previous video, we saw him speaking French as well. It, you know, he, he, it's really decent what he's saying here. I, I think you can tell that he's got, he, he, the cogs are whirring quite a lot in his brain. He probably doesn't speak uh, Italian all that often, but, but his Italian is quite accurate and, and, he's, and he's really getting his point across. He's expressing himself. And again, he's doing it on stage with a microphone in, on camera in front of a bunch of people. And so there's a lot to be said for that. You know, I get the impression that, that there, there are people who, who often Europeans, people who learn Romance languages in particular, who kind of do, do the, the kind of grand tour of the Romance languages. So people learn um, French and Italian and Spanish, uh, Portuguese perhaps. And they often get to a, a point where they can kind of easily, they, they learn the basics of these languages and they can quite easily switch from one to the other uh, and you know, say something in French and then say something in Italian and say something in, in, in Spanish. Um, but it's almost like because it's so natural for them having grown up in that environment or having learned those languages, they, they kind of take it a little bit for granted and don't really ever feel the need to practice those languages all that much. And and so you, you kind of get this kind of jumping from, from, from one to the next, being quite competent in a number of different uh, languages, romance languages, without actually kind of really mastering 
any of them. And I, I really sympathize with that because the, the more years pass that I don't keep up all of my languages actively, I find myself kind of falling into that trap a little bit as well. And I wonder if in Vigo's case, like this is, this is where he's at with his French and his Italian, you know, he can get by pretty well, but, but just kind of lacks that general fluidity that you get from speaking a language frequently um, and, and a lot. Next, please. Mio, Coronello Hans Landa de la SS. Buongiorno, signori, è un piacere. Gli amici della vedetta ammirata da tutti noi, questa gemma propria della nostra cultura, saranno naturalmente accolti sotto la mia protezione per la durata del loro soggiorno. Grazie. Corlomi, lo pronuncio correttamente? Uh, sì, uh, corretto. Gorlomi? Per cortesia, me lo ripeti ancora. If you haven't seen this film, there's a lot of context here, which is worth knowing about what exactly linguistically is going on here, because it's, it's really quite funny. Um, so, yeah, Christoph, he's, a, he's an actor, he's learned his lines, he's delivered them very well. It's kind of difficult to know what, what more to say, really. He's just an he's a fantastic actor, accomplished with languages, he's got a great knack for it. We saw him speaking French in my uh, previous reaction video about actors and celebrities speaking French. He's a, just a general, all-round good language guy, but it is difficult to say just from this alone how good his, friend, his, uh, his Italian really is, but hey, I wish I was in Quentin Tarantino movie speaking Italian, so all credit to him. Now, on to our next. Hai detto che vuoi dare una mano al basket italiano, cosa vuoi fare, che idea hai? Beh, cominciamo con camps, clinics, e spero di un giorno crescerlo con una scuola che insegna palacanes, però non solamente palacanes, no? ci sono le cose che, che di sport che è anche importante, perché sicuramente ci sono giocatori che vanno a giocare professionali, però ci sono anche altri giocatori che non è possibile. Allora cosa fanno? È importante che sanno le cose di business, eh, eh, che so, surround e girano. il gioco, che girano il gioco, no? scrittura, marketing, business, tutte le cose così, allora puoi rimanere vicino alla tua passione, però puoi fare un altro, un altro modo di lavoro. This is fantastic, it's just so great to see. Uh, Kobe, he, he, um, he actually spent a lot of time in Italy, he, he retired to Italy, uh, moved to Italy when he retired from the NBA, he also sp spent uh, some of his childhood uh, in Italy, and you can see here that his Italian is really, really competent. He's, uh, he's just so chilled out. You can, you can tell so much about someone's language abilities by their general demeanor when they're speaking the language. He's, he's just kicking back, sitting in a, some square in Italy somewhere, just chatting away in Italian. And he's just, he's, he's comfortable, he's confident. He's, he, he, he knows the language. This is the kind of thing that you really just, you can't, you can't hide behind. So it's just really, really wonderful to see this. He's also got a great accent. His grammar is good across the board. Uh, I think that's, that's fantastic. Now, did you notice at the end how he was asking for that word and how do you say surrounding or, or around? And this is a, a, a quality that, you know, it's easy to kind of dismiss this or, or, or say it's not that important. But really, again, remember he's being filmed. He's talking, I don't know who's filming him here, but he's talking to someone in Italian. There's a word he doesn't know and he wants to know that word and so he asks. He stops and he asks how to say that word. And it's that quality from people that really just want to know things, want to want to improve, have this desire to learn. You know, I would not be surprised if that quality, that desire to learn really transfers across his, his whole life pretty much, not just learning Italian but also across so many different things in life. It's this kind of attitude of right, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and get it. I'm gonna go and learn this language. I'm gonna figure out how I can how I can acquire the language. Little giveaways like that are, are fantastic. Rest in peace Kobe. Now who's next? Università. Si. Ma parlo con un accento francese orribile. Come orribile? Orribile. È bello questo l'accento francese, parlare italiano con l'accento francese. È meglio che l'americano. No, rende ancora più musicale la lingua. Ah, possibile. That's all there is. That's the only part of the clip that we have. Isn't it interesting how Jodie is so relaxed and chilled when she's speaking Italian? And I think I know where this comes from. Now, in my French reaction video, 
we saw her speaking French and her French is native level and she actually went to the uh, Lycée Francais in uh, Los Angeles, which is where she learned her, her French. And so as an American woman who speaks perfect French and has obviously learned some Italian, in fact, she studied Italian at university, you can sort of, that's, I think that's the, that's the line of this, com that's where this confidence comes from. And it's like what we were saying earlier about uh, about Vigo, how if you if you if you do speak a few Romance languages, there is a certain kind of root confidence that you have that you you just understand how the languages change and you can just learn and, and manipulate them fairly easily. It wouldn't surprise me if she spoke a bit of Spanish and Portuguese as well. I, I don't know whether or not she does. Uh, so fantastic from Jody. Not much to say really based on this short clip, but she's obviously very, very smart and talented with languages. Let's see who's coming up last. Italy, of course, my roots, you know, <laughs> my home. <laughs> Can you come and compliment uh, your fans, uh, Italian fans, please? Okay. In Italian, um, maybe? Uh, uh, amore, amore. Um, sono, sono, uh, sono, uh, yeah, si. Um, right. But also, I'm happy. Uh, felice. Do, felice. Uh, sono uh, felice. Uh, amore and um, grazie, grazie. Totally mondo. Thank you. John, what a legend. Now, before I talk about John, who's been the most interesting character from uh, from this video so far? Let me know in the comments who you find most impressive or, or any, any thoughts you have on who you've seen here. Now, John is obviously a legend. His uh, Italian is not quite legendary. I'm not actually convinced he knows a single word uh, in Italian, but look, that's fine. There's absolutely no judgment around here. We all, many of us, I'm <laughs> sure many people have better things to do than to be learning languages all day long. Frankly, I find it amazing that these uh, these celebrities in, the, in that we've seen here in this video like have the time to learn any languages. Really, the amount of, of the things that these guys and girls do it's 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 remarkable. So, full respect to all of them for learning uh, even the minimal uh, Italian. I do find it interesting though how when you get people like John here who who talk about their roots and and you know you heard him at the beginning said Italian my Italy my roots. I do find it interesting how you can have that feeling and that passion for your roots, but then not take the time to actually learn the language at all. I mean, if you have that passion, would you not take the time to learn the language? I mean, I don't know, language learning is not for everyone. But I do wonder if he would learn Italian if he knew how quickly it is actually possible to learn the language. A few years ago, I learned Italian myself in three months, and I documented the whole thing on YouTube, and I did it with an interesting method that uses stories to learn the language, and John, if you're watching and if you'd like to give this a try, then you just sign up for my free email tips right over here. People love these emails that I send. They're really simple. They tell stories about how I learned Italian and also show you how you can learn Italian also using stories. Check it out.